it is 7.30, so we will get started. Um, first of all, I just wanted to do a little bit of um, background on on myself. For some of you, obviously, some of you I've met before. Some of you may have seen me on social media. Um, and there are some of you that I work with on a, on a weekly or a monthly basis. Um, so my name's Wayne, obviously. Um, originally from Zimbabwe, brought up in Zimbabwe. Um, we were cattle ranchers out in Zimbabwe. We ran about two and a half thousand head of cattle group crops and we ran about 80, 80 head of horses. So we used to breed our own horses. We uh, competed in various disciplines over the years. Um, so my horsemanship journey started as a, as a child, basically, with my dad was um, originally a policeman in the British South Africa police in the Rhodesia days, um, and he used to patrol on horseback. So we were always um, in contact with horses. My family were um, always keen on horses. And uh, at one point, we set up a, a safari, horseback safari business in Zimbabwe on our farms. We had three farms over there. Um, so, yeah, we used to uh, have people come in and stay and um, Camping and we had uh, lodge facilities, and we had a lot of people come stay with us over the years. And um, so, you know, from there, I am. Um, I spent time. In, I've been to about thirty-two different countries over the, the last um, so 30, 30 years or so. Um, I've experienced different horsemen from different countries. I've um, spent a year in Argentina on horseback um, with the, the northern uh, Argentinians. So I trekked out there for a year on horseback. Uh, with a couple of horses, so I spent a lot of time with um, in those days a lot of time with with my horse, um, and realised the advantages of spending time with your horse. In the modern day society and uh, in, our, in our society today, we don't get to spend a lot of time with our horses. Um, you know, maybe an hour or two a day, or whatever the case may be. So one of the most valuable things you can do with your horse is, is spend a lot of time with it. Um, and it's a, t- it's a tough one, but it's, um, it really makes a difference to the relationship that you have with your horse. Um, so things like hanging out in the paddock, um, spending time with your horse on a, on a regular basis can help develop that relationship that you're looking for. Because uh, when it comes to liberty, we need to have a, a strong relationship with our horse. So a couple more people joining in here. Um, so yeah, working, uh, we, we we had 80 odd horses out in Zim. Uh, traditionally, well, growing up as a child, we were sort of very um, uh, traditional in those days. I would call it um, horsemen. Uh, we we didn't really think about the horse's state of mind or think about the horse's well-being as much as I do today. Um, especially the emotional but the well-being of the horse and taking care of that. So um, that's really important part of the, um, the equation to developing. Uh, liberty with your horse, <clears throat> um, and it's basically um, becoming um, the herd for your horse. So your horse relies on the relationship it has with the other, with the others in the herd, um, and often that can be disrupted because of the <clears throat> uh, the lack of space, or we try to protect our horses from other horses from being kicked, and that sort of thing. So we we often put them out on their own, which is a double edged sword, really. One way it's um, they lack interaction with other horses, um, but on the other hand, it can give you the opportunity to step in and become the herd and the, the herd leader, so to speak, so that the horse um, feels calm and confident and safe in your presence. <clears throat> now, I deal with this on a daily basis. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really tough one because we don't have a, really have that much time to spend with our horses, so. Um, making the time to do that, building a relationship with your horse, understanding how horses communicate with each other, and becoming the herd that your horse feels safe in, so that it can um, start to relax and start to take your leadership. So that's a, quite an important part of the equation, of developing that relationship with your horse. Um, as I go along, if there are any questions, I'm, I'm totally open to taking any questions. If you're on a liberty journey at the moment, which some of you are, um, I'm open to any questions that you may have or any um, issues that you are facing. Um, so, yeah, please, no problem to inter- interject and, and ask questions. Um, we've got quite a lot of people on today, so that's really good. Um, I'd say my, my liberty journey for myself started as a child. Um, I started to recognize uh, 
the horse language, because um, I was brought up in the bush, I spent a lot of time with animals. We had obviously had dogs and cats and goats and cattle and all sorts of things, but I also got a lot of time to spend in the bush itself with wild animals. Um, and I was fascinated by observing um, uh, wild animals. We had zebra, wildebeest, warthog, baboons, all sorts of different uh, game running around our farm. Um, so I, I was fascinated by um, the interaction between animals. And it's something that um, I've been on a journey ever since. Um, I spent some time with some really interesting people along the way in Australia, New Zealand, um, South America. Um, I also spent quite a bit of time in Africa. And while I was out in Africa, I worked quite a lot with dolphins actually in West Africa, so there's not many horses out there. Um, so developing that um, understanding of how the horses communicate with each other and how they talk to each other through non-verbal communication is a really important part of um, the liberty journey. So spending time in um, understanding that that uh, communication is, is really important. And if you have the time to do it, um, I suggest that you spend some time with, um, with a herd or with your horses and observe them really closely and learn how they communicate with each other. Um, it's really helpful when it comes to the liberty journey and in general horsemanship. So you take care of the emotional side of the, the horse um, and develop a relationship. So for me, it's about relationship first and then working, then we're going to, we move into groundwork. So the groundwork that I do with everybody that I'm working with is a, is a basic groundwork package. Um, that enables you to be able to send your horse around you um, to transition to walk, trot, canter, um, to move the horse backwards and forwards, as well as being able to walk with your horse and get your horse in synchronicity with your feet. So the whole objective is to get the horse to watch your feet because that's how they uh, how they will look at each other. So if I move my feet, you move your feet with me. If I stop, you stop. If I go backwards, you go backwards. So a lot of time spent just walking with my horse, so walking around the arena or whatever facility you may have <clears throat> and getting the horse to um, start to recognize your body language with an understanding of how they communicate with each other. So the feet are really important, uh, following the feet, being able to walk around the arena, for example, and get your horse to walk, trot. Um, Cancer can be difficult because you've got to keep up with them. Uh, but that'll come later when you start to send them around in a circle, a close circle around you. So you want to develop a bond with your horse. Um, and that takes time. But the essential part of it, the starting point for all of this, is the groundwork. So simple things like being able to send your horse around you, left and right, and transition. And getting that perfected is really, really important. Once once that's perfected, um, you start to get uh, develop a draw with our horse. So being able to draw a horse. And this, this can take hours and hours of, of practice, but teaching a horse to draw towards you, so stepping backwards, stepping backwards in a circle, um, getting the horse to move around you close, firstly online. So everything is done um, online with my 14 foot training rope or whatever sort of training rope you have. So um, spending enough time with that will get you to the place that you're looking to to go to liberty. And, um, the, the important thing to recognize that here is that each horse is, in, uh, is, is can have a slightly different um, personality or be have a, a right or a left brain tendency. Um, so some of them are introvert and some are extrovert. <clears throat> and be able to recognize that and work with that is really, really important. Um, so if you have an, an extroverted horse, you'll often find that there's more exuberance and there's more play drive. To, to do um, to do liberty, um, if you have an introverted horse, often it's really hard to get them to um, to join up and to want to work with you. And then sometimes you get a lazy horse you know, um, who needs um, more encouragement with a, a training stick or um, a training aid might help with that. So the important thing, like I said um, in the beginning, is to develop your groundwork. So I don't know how many of you are doing that. Um, some of the clients that I work with are online right now, so they'll um, understand what I'm talking about. But if you've got any questions on, on the groundwork, the basic groundwork, please, please feel free to um, ask any questions. I won't dwell too long. If you have, don't have questions, I'll just I'll move on from that. Um, 
So with the groundwork, what we're looking to do is establish establish um, the relationship first, then trust, um, respect, so that we're not getting pushed around. Um, so we, we develop all those um, in our groundwork program, training program. Um, the details on that, obviously, I'm not going. I'm not here to uh, give you how to do those things, um, but how to develop the, the, the pathways to to liberty through the groundwork develops neurons in the in the, in the brain um, pathways, if you like, to to learning. And once we start to develop those pathways to learning, um, they get stronger, and then we can start to teach the horse more. But the basics. Uh, come down to groundwork, so that's really, really important. If you don't have that in place, you're going to struggle to get the, the liberty. If you haven't developed the relationship and the understanding, um, <clears throat> then <clears throat> um, so those things will develop a solid foundation for liberty. Um, so practicing the, the groundwork, and then um, sorry, learning the groundwork first, and then practicing, um, and then then from there we move on to the draw. So the draw is, is super, super important when it comes to liberty. So being able to draw your horse towards you, um, just with simple things online to start with, so walking backwards and getting the horse to come to you, um, running backwards and getting the horse to, to come to you, and then start to do a, a, a circle, a backward circle. It's kind of hard to explain um, um, without being with the horse and showing you, um, but basically we'll be um, sending the horse around quite close to us and getting it to with a training stick, normally with a training stick I'll use, <clears throat> getting the horse to move around you and then start to get a slight hind quarter yield with the horse around you, really quite close to you to start with. Um, so they start to connect and then a lot of um, walking backwards, running backwards and getting the horse to come up with you. Um, once that's working, then um, we're going to into the walk. So we get the horse to walk next to us. Um, and see if the horse can start to follow our feet. So we can walk, we can trot, and if you've got the speed to go in the, in the, in the arena to, to canter. So that's, um, that's a, that, that's like super important to draw. So if you're struggling with that, um, often, um, you know, there's horses, there's different, um, uh, horses with, uh, what I call play drive. So there might be a, a strong play drive, like, um, Maybridge. Your boy's got a strong play drive, um, so he's really keen to engage and to get um, get connected. But he's a really big horse, um, and so you, know, you, you could get on top of him. So you've got to be real careful if you establish the respect side of the relationship, as well as the connection and the draw, um, so that you don't get in trouble and just starts to uh, jump up and get on top of you. So being safe in that in, in, in that environment. Um, so the, the liberty exercises, <clears throat> once you've established the, the groundwork, is to now start to do work on those liberty exercises. Um, so the first thing is being able to <clears throat> walk with my horse around um, online to start with, so that I can walk and um, uh, engage different paces at walk. So I have a slow, medium, and fast walk. The important thing is when you're walking is when you ask your horse to stop when you stop your feet, is to slow down um, first before you stop. So don't be going too fast and then just stop. Um, I always just slow down. I use my body position too. So when I'm when I'm when I'm in neutral and stop, I'm standing up straight. And when I want to move off with the horse, I'll lean forward slightly and then step and see if the horse comes up with me. If the horse doesn't come up with me, then I'll use my training stick uh, to start with in my right hand. And just bring the horse up from behind. So I use my training stick behind me and just encourage the horse to come up to me. I like the horse to be, the horse's neck to be sitting on my shoulder, whatever side I do. Making sure I work both sides of the horse, but I like him to sit up on my shoulder. So everywhere I move, he moves with me. Um, and he moves with me with his neck just behind the head on my shoulder. Um, you can spend hours and hours doing that. You know, it depends on the horse. It depends on how much time you have, but it's something that you need to perfect. Um, that that horse is sticking with you 100%, um, just walking around. So walk, trot, canter, stopping, uh, sorry, not canter to start with, but walk and trot, and then stopping, and then teaching your horse also back up, so following your feet, all about him following your feet. 
the important thing here is to keep some distance between you. The horse is right on top of you, right on your shoulder. He's not going to really see um, your body language, and especially your feet. So having a foot between you, at least a foot between you, is important. And um, to start with, uh, you might find that the horse will stick really close to you and almost on top of you, which is quite normal to start with. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll use that to my advantage to start with so that the horse is moving with me. And then once it's moving with me and can uh, stop, go backwards and walk and trot with me, um, then I'll change the position of my stick. For example, if I had the horse on my left side, I take my stick from my right side and start to put it into my left hand. Um, and that often just um, has a presence, so it moves the horse away from you a little bit so it can, can see you clearly. Um, he's not running on top of you. Um, so that process is a delicate process too. And starting off, with, like I say, with a, with a stick on the opposite side, so I get the horse to stick with me first. Because if you go, if you change over your stick too soon, you might push, find that the horse will push the horse away from you. Um, so all this is done online. So with my training rope, all done online to start with. Um, um, and so just perfecting that walk, being able to walk uh, at three different speeds at walk and then a trot, and then be able to slow down and stop uh, and then back up. So those simple steps can take many, many hours of work, trust me, um, depending on your horse and your horse's of, um, interaction. But like I keep saying, I keep going back to, to the relationship and building the relationship, which comes from the groundwork. So um, those exercises, uh, firstly at walk, are critical um, and will get you where you need to be uh, in the bigger picture. Then we're going to be able to do the circle work, which I, we just touched on just now, but being able to um, send my horse around me um, on the line, obviously to start with, everything is done online, and I just re I repeat this, you know, it could take um, 5, 10, 20 sessions. It, it, it depends on the horse and also your skill level that being able to bring the, bring the horse forward and draw your horse to you. So I'll start to do circles. Um, my groundwork, my basic groundwork first is sending around and then my next step towards liberty is being able to draw the horse in towards you. So doing a circle, so to speak, um, backwards. Um, and this develops a really good calf muscle, by the way. So if you're into that, um, that'll make a difference to your calves. But being able to walk backwards and to draw backwards so I can get the horse to walk around me, drawing the horse in a circle, and then also then start to trot the horse around me. So it's been many, many hours just doing that, just repeating it, repeating it, repeating it. Um, the, ne the next thing I'm going to start to do um, is start to work on that hind quarter yield and draw. So if my horse does, doesn't want to come forward, <clears throat> I'll start to push the hind quarter around a little bit and then once they move their feet, get them to draw towards me. What I do at the end of every session that I, I do with um, everybody that I work with is at the end of my session is I'll, I'll take the rope off or I'll just uh, drape the rope around the horse's neck and, and see whether that connection is starting to develop. So just being able to walk off and leave the rope and just be able to walk off or walk backwards and send them around in a circle around me. Um, and that just all comes down to the amount of time you spend doing it online. So with your rope in your hand, and just repeating these exercises over and over again. Um, the next step would be from your circles, to um, getting that working nicely. Um, and it's important to note that when you're sending a horse around you, just to as you start to develop a bit of a hind quarter yield as the horse is going around you. So it's hard to explain without having a horse with me, which is what I normally do. So this is quite quite new for me explaining the stuff without having a horse with me. Um, is um, being able to have a slight hind quarter yield. So then <clears throat> my horse will be about three or four foot, probably three foot away from me online, and I can send him round. Um, I can get a hind quarter yield and I send him round at the same time. And then I can start to draw backwards. Um, so this is encouraging the horse to come to me, to connect with me, to keep on draw, draw, draw. And it's a critical part of the, of the liberty process is getting that draw. So like I say, many, many hours doing that. Um, uh, exercises. Uh, the next thing would be once, once we've got that working, once we can get a nice walk around us, um, 
and that's you can feel that connection by the way the horse is communicating you through its body language. So if it's looking out and it's still connected to the outside world, um, you know that you haven't got that connection. And if you let the horse go, it'll probably just wander off away from you. So being aware of those signs um, that the horse is connecting with you, for example, the ears cocked in towards you. If you look closely on the eye, you can see when the eye is connected on you. Um, so being aware of those signs and developing that. Um, the next thing would be the draw towards me. So being able to draw the horse directly towards me. Um, at a walk and then a trot, so trotting backwards, so running backwards, so it's good for your cars. Um, um, doing a lot of that, so drawing towards me and stop and then running backwards and then towards me and stop, walk and trot, come to me, come to me, come to me. So I spent a lot of time with that drawing towards me. And then once I've got that um, established, um, I'll start to send the horse around me again. And just get that to make sure that connection is, is there. Um, and then hopefully after not too long, since we're joining here, let me see. I'll just uh, kick this person in, sorry. Uh, Judy joined a while ago, but I haven't kicked her in. Sorry, Judy. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on there. I hope our internet connection is okay. We had a few problems last week with internet, internet connection. And that's, that's okay. Eh? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Now uh, the next one. Yeah. That's all. Okay, sorry. Janine just helped me out yeah, with the computer. Make sure. Okay, so that's all good. Um, the next thing, uh, once you've established that, that circle, um, so the idea is that the horse is working quite close to me and I've established my circle. So I'm keeping the horse quite close to me to establish that circle. Um, and then, then once I've got that working and I know that the horse is connecting with me, I can start to take the rope off and see if the horse will draw towards me. So I'll disconnect or take the halter off and see if the horse will draw towards me. So Draw, draw, draw. So just standing in front and getting the horse to draw towards you. Um, if that's not happening, then I'll step around to the hind quarter, disengage the hind quarter, get the back feet moving, and then draw the horse towards you. So just by standing in front of your horse, asking it to come forward, there's nothing happening. Stepping around the side of the horse to the hind quarter, get the hind quarter to move around, and then step backwards. Um, so you can let your horse go in the arena and do this. Obviously, you spent the time with your ground work and you spent the time with your liberty training online. Um, and if I let my horse go and it disconnects from me, I walk around to the hind quarter. So a nice arc around. You can determine um, yourself by the, by the horse's reaction, whether you're too close or too far away. And just pushing the horse's hind quarter around to come and face you and then walking off. So, um, I'll, I'll start to walk off either backwards, it can be both, you're walking backwards and getting the horse to come towards me, or turn around and walk away and the horse will come up with me. Um, so every time every time the horse engage, disengages with me, I'll go around to the hind quarter, push the hind quarter, turn the feet start moving, and I start to draw the horse towards me. So a lot of this. Um, and like I say, once you've done this, you've done hours and hours of this work, you can start to let go and start to work with the horse at, at liberty. Um, and if you get this connection, you go back to your line, put your line back on, and work on the draw. Draw is for everything. If you don't have draw, you you won't you won't get anywhere with liberty. So once you've established that small circle around you, um, you can start to let them out a little bit. Um, but getting that small circle around you, it's probably you know about four or five foot circle around you. It's quite close. Um, so you want your, your horse to feel comfortable with you being in that space and. The groundwork that we do gets him comfortable with that. So if I'm sending my horse around me doing my groundwork, I can send him out on a 14 foot line around me. Um, I can also draw him into a smaller circle around me. So I can send him in and out. So if I can send him there and just decrease my circle or increase my circle, make sure my hind quarter yield is working, making sure my shoulder yield is working. Um, so once you're know, making sure that that's all 
that's all working. And then basically, you know, letting go of my line and seeing if I can keep the horse close to me. So the idea is to keep him close to you to start with. Um, because often when you start the process, you'll, you'll pick up your, your training stick. I, for the liberty, I normally use a little bit of a longer uh, lunge foot um, with no tail on it, so it's a little bit longer, so I can reach behind the shoulder. So when I'm drawing towards me, for example, on a, sh- on a three or four, four foot line in front of me, um, I take my stick and I just start to move that behind the shoulder, so I'm drawing and pushing at the same time, so I can draw, push towards me from just behind the shoulder, so they're coming towards me. Um, I don't want to be pulling them towards me, I want to be drawing. So it's not so much about pulling, it's the same with your groundwork. If you're, if you're pulling or your horse is pulling, obviously you're in the wrong place. <clears throat> you want to find a place where it's soft and easy, so there's no pulling going on. But to start with, you might experience that. Um, any questions? I've been talking for half an hour. Is there any questions? No questions? Good. Okay, well, I've got a couple of questions which a couple of you cued to me. Um, uh, one was, how much does the environment affect your liberty work? <coughs> well, to start with, the environment can definitely affect your, your liberty work. And this is where the relationship and connection comes in with your basic groundwork training, is to, to develop um, a connection where the external environment is irrelevant to both you and the horse, you're aware of it, but he's more connected with you. So if you're, for example, doing your groundwork and your horse is connected to the external environment, he's winning for the other horses, for example, or he's just he's running around, and there's no connection with it, with that, that's what we need to develop, <clears throat> is that he's focusing on, on me and not the external environment. And that's what takes the time. Initially, that's what takes the time. And that's why we use the groundwork for that. So the groundwork, like I said, includes being able to send the horse around you, left and right, with trot canter, backwards, forwards, and then also being able to walk around the arena with the horse up on your shoulder, so the neck on your shoulder. It's important that they're in that position because they're behind you. Um, you're going to lose connection. If they're in front of you, obviously they're going to be gone and you're going to lose that connection. So working online, perfecting that is, <clears throat> is the key to liberty. And spending the time doing that um, it could take hours, <clears throat> it could take you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 hours of work with your horse. Um, what I suggest is that you log down your hours that you work with your horse. So that's what I like to do every time I work with my horse. I log down my hours so I can say, <clears throat> excuse me, I can say I'll get 50 hours, 100 hours, whatever it may be on with my horse. Um, I often get people that um, say that they've had a horse for you know four years and um, they've worked with the horse over that period of time. Um, so you know, four years sounds a lot, like a lot of uh, time training, but if you break it down into how many hours you spent, on that particular um, step or that particular process or whatever it is you're looking for, I find that a good indicator of where I'm at. Um, so keeping keeping that in mind. Um, <clears throat> so at the end of the day, <laughs> if, you're, if, you, if you've got your liberty working in a round pen, so obviously we, mainly we would use a round pen for liberty work. You can use an arena. Um, obviously you've got a bigger space, so if you lose your horse, Harder to get him back because you've now got to walk to the other side of the arena in a round pin, in a 60 foot round pin, for example. You haven't got a lot of um, ground to cover. <coughs> and <coughs> you start to send your horse around. Um, and if you lose him, you start to push him and ask him to come around. So a little bit of push um, and then a little bit of draw. So you send him around and draw him towards me. If I can't get him to come towards me, I disengage the hind quarter, move the hind quarter, get those feet moving, and then draw the horse towards me by moving backwards. So getting that in. Um, going back to the the question, the, the environment, I hope I've answered that question. Um, the environment um, ultimately becomes irrelevant um, to to me and the horse. It still exists, but it's a connection that's stronger than the, the desire to um, connect externally to maybe another horse or there's something going on out there, so distraction. So, and like I keep saying, it takes hours and hours of groundwork to get this 
into the right right place. Um, but time for one more question. Um, okay, so another question is: um, Some days I can do liberty, and then other days I lose my connection with the horse and lose that liberty. Um, so what I, what I would be doing if I was um, going on that down that path um, is to go back to my groundwork, go back to I'll put my rope back on and start to work on that draw. If you've got a round pin, it makes all this a lot easier. Um, so, yeah, keep that in mind. Um, uh, so, the, this question is, some days I can do liberty and other days uh, it doesn't work so well. What can cause this? Um, so, the main cause of this is the, the lack of connection, the lack of relationship, the lack of connection. Um, so going back to back to my basics, always back to basics. If things fall apart, I go back to step one, um, which is you know in, in the groundwork program would be set, sending the horse around you, making sure that you can walk, up canter, draw, push. So you want to do, develop a balance of draw and push. I hope it answers that question. And um, that's one really quickly. That's an hour gone up there. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed that. Um, any questions before you go? Just want to say hello. I'm here. And um, I've, I've another half an hour. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought that was it. <laughs> I've kind of got through all my all my information here. Um, so yeah, can I open up to any questions? Maybrit, you got any questions? How are you doing, Maybrit? <laughs> Hmm. Uh, there, okay. Uh, no. I think they gotta unmute themselves. So if you want if you have <coughs> excuse me <coughs> if you do have a question, uh, you've got to unmute yourself. I've been able to talk. Um yeah. Okay. Uh another question here. Okay, so there's a question here which we which we probably covered. Is liberty just having your horse follow you around or what else is there? And I think we've already covered most of that, so um any questions? I need some questions. How are you getting on, Nick? How's your liberty journey coming here? I've, I've you seen your new horse once. How's it going? Have you had some time to spend with him? Someone? It's all right. Trying to put random buttons. I think I've got the microphone button. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, so I haven't spent any more time with Harry anymore. Yes. But I have spent some more time with Daisy. And right. And, and Daisy's coming on really well. Really, really good. Um, I, I rode her today. I did some, uh, some groundwork with her on um, on Sunday, and uh, I've got a session tomorrow. I'll probably work with both of them tomorrow. Really? So, we'll carry out right at the extreme beginning of her horse and dip rope work, her uh, groundwork lesson. <coughs> yes. So she's got a lot of learning to do, um, yeah. but I think I think she'll be great because she's so. Um, Apart from the tendency to try to eat, she's more likely to concentrate on, on you, the person, than on the rest of the environment. Mm-hmm. So Daisy, as you know, her, you know, her brain is entirely on that the sheep three fields away, or the cow that she thinks she heard. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, so trying to get Daisy's concentration is, um, has been a real challenge for years, years and years yeah. and years. Yeah. Um, but suddenly, over, over about the last well, there's been a real progression over the last six months, but it's still been making huge progress, um, even over the last few weeks. Brilliant. It's completely transformed from being extremely difficult to being a normal green horse, green yeah. in, in terms of being ridden and green in terms of groundwork. You know, she, she knows it, sometimes mm. she's not really paying attention, mm. uh, but sometimes she is, and I'm really, really pleased. Oh, that's wonderful, Nick. That's good news. Because, uh, yeah, she's uh, definitely an extrovert. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's the difference between them is quite remarkable. Yeah, so they're to- totally different in character. And for your for your horseman's horsemanship journey, that's gonna 
can uh, develop your skills with different types, two different types of horses, isn't it? Yes, it's kind of, you're going to help me distinguish between um, what is universal and what depends on the individual horse. You know, yes. to, to build the relationship with the horse. I have spent hours and hours and hours with Daisy just hand grazing and just sitting with her in the field. Um, so that building relationship. And, mm-hmm. uh, as I think you know, she was she was extremely difficult in the early years, and you simply had to sit there in the field with a book or, or browsing Facebook or something just to, to get her to, mm. to even be sort of catchable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, so yeah, it's going to be a really interesting journey with both of them. Yeah, brilliant. I think, I think Daisy will be a, a ridden ball, um, and Cariad will be, because Cariad's so small, I can't buy that. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be a groundwork and it's going to be all awesome. that. And I, yeah. I hope to find somebody else to write you know, a little person. No, oh, brilliant, brilliant. Oh, no, oh, that's wonderful. That, well, that's good news. And um, yeah, I think we'll, I'll, I think I'll be seeing you in a couple of weeks, one, I Nick. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, the name was asked about next. I can't do next. I can do the week after that. Brilliant, brilliant. So yeah, keep up, keep up the um, keep up the groundwork. Have you um, did you say you haven't had much time with her since I last saw you? No. So not, not with, with, with Cariad, because she worked with me on Sunday. That's right. It's now Wednesday. I haven't worked with her at all in that period of time. Oh, okay. But I will work with her tomorrow. Oh, brilliant. Oh, let me know how that goes. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested to see, having watched how you could develop her over that one hour, mm-hmm. I'm very interested to see where I start. Mm-hmm. And, and you know how she responds to me, and how much of that work that you did, I mm. have to repeat. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. So, um, so you you initially on your on your on your session, you'll you'll go to your groundwork, back to your groundwork basics. Oh, very, very basic. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, even just even just straight line on a on a road, obviously. And, yeah. But even even before going into circles. Just walking around, trying to get her to follow my feet, walk with me, stop. As you know, she's very bargy. She, she yeah. will tend to walk straight past you and tend to, tend to shoulder into you. So, yeah. Yeah. so you know, before I even start trying to do anything subtle in the way of circles or draw or anything, I just want to get some, get that level of attention so that she's actually recognizing she's walking with me rather than doing yeah. her own thing and I happen to be there. Exactly, exactly, and that um, and that takes a bit of time, and also developing the um, skill. But um, like I touched on earlier, is initially to start with, I'll have my training stick. For example, if my horse is on my left, I'll have my training stick on my right. So I'm encouraging the horse to to stick close to me to start with. But once I get that developed, then I'll just change my stick over to the other side, and that normally creates a bit of space between the two of you. So it's also Developing connection, but uh, respect at the same time, isn't it? Yes. Mm-hmm. And also, I think both of my horses have, have to a certain extent to become bilingual because mm-hmm. they're in an environment where they are lucky, they are, they are managed by, shall we say, conventional horse people. Yes. Um, now I've, I've managed to train them not to Chase Daisy around with a lunch run, but to, you know, to, mm-hmm. or with a lunch <coughs> whip. To, mm-hmm. to, to, if she's moving, just let her continue to move. Yeah. But Cariad's never been taught that way. Right. So she's got a new language to learn. Mm-hmm. In terms of uh, what what Corelli calls, you know, uh, maintain gait and direction. So once you yep. once you've started doing something. Continue to do it until you're asked to do something different. That's right. So it's right. the conventional way is more or less to keep chasing around. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And we, are, I've had a couple of discussions today about um, traditional type lunging. Um, with, um, I worked with a horse today that, as soon as I asked it to move around with for me, it just took off. Um, and I have a lot of these cases where people say I can't lunge my horse. I can go one way but not the other way. So you've got your left and right vein tendencies there. Um, but also with the lunging, it's, um, it's, it can be detrimental if it's done incorrectly. Um, 
and you put the horse into fear mode and rather chasing it around, like you say, rather than communicating and getting that horse to maintain a gait. Eventually, I can stand still um, on my groundwork and get the horse to maintain a walk, trot, or canter without even moving my feet. <clears throat> and in traditional lunging, you'll find that people are generally, not, not, not everybody, but generally we're chasing the horse around with quite a long whip. Um, and so there's no, con- we don't, not developing connection, are we? No, no, I mean, the, the traditional instruction is, is, is to form a triangle, essentially, or the apex of the triangle, with the, with the whip to the hind end of the horse and the rope to the fore end of the horse. And, mm-hmm. and, and you rotate in a small circle with it. And, and, uh, and that means that you're, you're forever pushing the horse. Mm-hmm. And that, if you consider that the, you know, the comparison with being ridden, what you want is you don't want to have to kick the horse every time it takes a step. You want to get it going into whatever gate and then just sit there and it continues. And, and, so, that, and, and that's developed on the ground, isn't it? Exactly. So, mm-hmm. so, so, so that is, a, a, as I say, you know, to a certain extent, the horse needs to become bilingual. The other thing, that you, and I, we mentioned, we were talking about it on Sunday, is in horsemanship type ground work, you allow the horse to turn towards you and you invite the horse in to reward it. Yeah. Whereas in conventional lunging, that's that. The horse yeah. is supposed to stop on the turf, pointing yeah. in the direction of the turf. Yes, yes. And so again, you know, to, to have a horse which has been conventionally that, yeah. and teach it that it's okay to come in, that it's yeah. invited to come in, that it can be patted on the head and rewarded. Yeah. It can be your ground time and just drop the road, then yeah. you drop his head, then mm. it relax. Mm, mm, um, mm. And that's something where you you actually have to teach the horse in in that you have to unteach it. You have to yeah. teach it. You have to reverse the teaching which is being taught by mm. conventional language. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. It, you know, overall, it's not uh, the conventional landings. Not like you say, it's not encouraging them to come to you, and it's not in really encouraging a, a relationship and developing that kind of herd mentality. Almost that you're the one, you're the leader, you, you, you're able to yeah. take. And also, an interesting point you touched on there, too, Nick, was um, relaxation, <clears throat> which I haven't actually touched on yet. But that's part of the groundwork training that we do is getting that relaxation. And often we have to teach the horse where to find relaxation because he doesn't have a herd environment to do that. So we show him where he can find relaxation. And I'm finding that very powerful ridden as well. So if mm. you want to, you know, suppose you've just been doing some, some I don't know, leg yielding or, or cancer management or something, and you want to say to the horse, you know, well done. Mm. Mm. You just drop the rein. I mean, not when you're riding away, you stop. But just drop the rein and, and, you know, rather than sort of vigorously pat it on the side of the head, it's just drop the reins and relax and take all the energy out of the body. Mm. Let the horse do your, your ground tie, get his head below the withers. Yep. When you're mounted. Mm-hmm. That seems to me to be a very, it's almost like treat training. It's a very powerful mm. signal to the horse that it's done what you wanted it to do. Absolutely, absolutely. And developing that and, and, and using a, a right across your training is, 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 like you say, it's a very powerful tool. Very you have powerful. to have the confidence to let go of the rain. This is a big the thing. On the yeah. And this is a big thing. I, you know, a lot of, uh, quite a lot of people I work with and have worked with in the, uh, when I first started to do the ridden side of things and getting them to ride on the buckle and be able to walk, trot, canter on the buckle or in a halter. Um, it's quite a scary, um, scary thing for a lot of people to go down that road because we traditionally we, we taught to ride with quite a lot of contact. Um, and, um, being able to let go and, um, trust your horse to, to do those, um, transitions and the circle transitions and what have you. It takes, um, it takes a different mindset, doesn't it? I've, I've been, I've been very much helped by the sessions that I've had with Jason Webb. Yeah. He teaches you a lot. You know, he, he tends to start off with the, um, with the one, one rein stop. So as, as part of introducing people who are 
I can say, apprehensive of riding on the bus. Yeah. It will, it will start off with practicing, drawing with the outside rail, and at the same time using the outside leg to push the horses across. So the horses steered mm. into the outside fence. It's got nowhere to go. Mm. Mm. So your outside leg is for your turn. Yeah, so, it's, it's, it's very much like we were saying on the circle where you, you yield the hind quarter. Yeah. So the horse turns towards you. Yeah. So you use the outside leg, you yield the hind quarter, you push his hind quarters in towards the center of, of wherever you're going so that the yep. head is now pointing out. Yeah, yeah. You're also using that outside rein, not, not to sort of yank it round, but mm. to draw it round, to point it in that direction. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden the horse finds that it's Pointing at the fence, you've got nowhere to go. Yeah, yeah, yep. and and that's a very effective break. And once you're confident with that break, then you can be more confident letting loose the rein because you know that if the horse decides to take off, you've got a break. Exactly, you've got that one hand, one rein bend and, and disengage the hindquarters. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think also it's another thing that is probably um, it's a different um, to traditional type of training. Um, we don't really do a lot of, uh, spend a lot of time with, um, flexion and, um, softness and picking up one rein or left or right rein and softness and getting that bend. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's just, uh, yeah, it, it makes a huge difference, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Harry has got a lot to learn about me. It's very stiff. <laughs> it's very stiff, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, spending the time with that and, and, and everything that we do is done with, um, it's, Soft as you can, so as little pressure as possible. But um, that's and that's also you know that's all the stuff that we develop on, um in our groundwork. Brilliant. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, it's good to hear, Nick. That's brilliant. Thank you. That's no problem. We've been looking forward to telling you, uh, keeping you up to date with all this. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, we'll we'll be uh, watching that one now. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Um, I don't know, has anyone else got any uh, questions? I've kind of exhausted my questions here. Um, so any questions on anything in particular? Maybrit, how are you getting on? So I think everyone's on uh, in listen mode but not speak mode. So if you want to, if you do want to talk, you have to click the, the um, icon on your side if you do want to talk. Or ask a question. Oh, there you go. Hi, Mabrit. <laughs> I'm still learning about this stuff myself. For me to sit in front of a computer for an hour is like, is, um, it's a huge thing for me to just sit in front of a computer for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're getting on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Recently, I have had small fights in the arena, and I wouldn't rather than long, torn up. And it basically because I can't concentrate for very long. Yeah. Um, so, I give him, give him lots of space in terms of understanding what I'm asking for. But he's so good. He's been so, so good. Uh, he's lovely. And he's so relaxed in the arena now. He uh, doesn't take any notice at the moment of anything that goes on around him. When he's in there, I'm I'm absolutely like, wow. Wow. <laughs> it's so, so nice. I'm starting to trust him now that he's not going to a mad in there when yeah. something kicks off outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, that's, that's, that's a big step for me. Um, yeah. And a big step, and a big step for him too. But he's yeah. also looking, like I said, a huge step for you because you're able to provide him with that security and that calmness and connection. Isn't it? And that's yeah. what's that's what's developing. He's, he's absolutely so rewarding. He's not, uh, and he knows it's like he shows me what he wants to do. I mean, he's just so good at that kind of thing. Very, very and smart, smart boy, isn't he? He is. He's lovely, absolutely yeah. lovely. And, and how you how you finding the draw? Is, is the draw starting to work? Nice yes, I I think it's working great. I play that. Yeah. Um, after I was watching this today, and I went to put another new gear, and when I go in there. He follows me like a living man all the way around. Brilliant. And I, I went in there and I just, I didn't go straight to the, to the gate. And I walked around in, in his feet and he followed me all the time. Oh. And, and when I stopped, he stopped. 
and he's he's still so focused on what I'm, what I'm doing, which is lovely. And uh, uh, beautiful. I really think it, it, it's it's good at the moment. It's, it, I feel it's going very well. Um, mm-hmm. The draw is working. Um, mm-hmm. I I do not have draws all the time I'm in there. Um, mm-hmm. And so far, so good. Um, I've taken off the rope sort of like the last time in this time in there. Yep. Um, he hasn't once, but probably because this, this is sort of the second that I've been, he hasn't, he hasn't had a, a really good run around there. <laughs> um, yeah, we had a, we had, so we had so a, we had a, we had a, we had a couple of those, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> when did we get when when we get taken back up it's it's yeah. quite exciting. He wants yeah, to yeah. play, he's so happy to play. Yeah. Now I remember the um uh, uh one of our sessions when he started to run in towards me and he was he was uh, going up in his high quarter and he really wanted to play. Yeah. <laughs> it can be a bit scary Yeah, he's, a, he's, he's rather big. <laughs> he's massive. <laughs> yeah. I mean he, Okay. Yeah, and that's a, that's a, that's the other thing is just building that respect, uh, yeah. keep maintaining connection but building respect at the same time. Well done. Yeah. yeah. There's less, there's less, less uh, of the legs jumping now in terms of like, I want, I want, I want to decide. So there's a lot less of that now. Oh, um, that's good. But there's, there's always a little bit of like, he's trying, he's saying like, I'm going to run to twice and then you realize, and then we've got to, Keep away from me. Then you totally respect that for the rest of the list. You walk that in the water. Ah, that's a bit I never had any card in there, and I'm in the field, but I've never, it's never on top of me. It's definitely quite good. Ah, that's good. So that's good. That's quite a turnaround, eh, from we, from when we first, um, met. Oh, yes. Yeah. Massive. Um, Massive. Oh, wonderful. So, um, I'm not sure when, um, am I seeing you in a couple of weeks? I think I'm in. Mm-hmm. I'm away from the first to the seventh. So the week after that, the second mm-hmm. week of September, probably, I'll contact them tomorrow. Okay. Um, and if you look at my dates in my diary, it's and see what we can get in. Sure. Because I'm, yeah, I'm just trying to, to sort of like practice all the stuff we've been working on. Yeah, and it takes time. It takes time because, because we don't have a lot of time. Um, sometimes it can draw out over quite a long period of time, but it's, it comes down to how many hours you spend doing it, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. There's no shortcuts in this. Uh, yeah. um, it's, it's only time and practice and practice and practice. Yeah. But um, the fact I feel so comfortable with in the in the house, that's mm-hmm. a big step for me. Um, yeah. Because mm-hmm. fear has always sort of like lived in the background. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have an accident or anything like that. Um, yeah. So that's the re- the, 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 Yeah, well done, well done. And the relaxation, the um, getting him to be able to drop his pole below his wither and relax, that's also worked really well, hasn't it? Oh, it's so relaxing. It's absolutely amazing to see him. He's, yeah, as soon as he goes in, he's like, oh, he's like, oh, he's like, 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 he's I go in there and I do that. That's, that's, how, that's how we do it. Mm-hmm. And that's and an important thing. Is that how I want it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What I want, yeah. I want to relax for something. I don't want it to laugh for us. That's a good point too because um, what we often do is we go into the arena and straight away we, we either either ridden or we are working on the ground. And we go in straight away and we, we work our horse and so the horse um, starts to um, almost how can I put it? Um, not getting a relaxation. So what I do is like we get relaxation in the arena or the round pen first, so the horse can find relaxation, and then we start to do um, do the groundwork program. So that's really important part of my training program is getting relaxation first, and it, it works a treat, doesn't it? Oh, it's it's a game changer. It mm. really is because you don't once you get that relaxation. They're only looking for you. They're not looking for anything that goes on outside. That's right. That's and that's right. such a nice place to be in because you don't have to consent to constantly worrying about 
is anything going to happen outside? Yeah. In the wild, you know, there seems to be a lot of wild horses that can't be quite quiet at the time. He doesn't pay any attention. Yeah, I was, I was quite, I was quite impressed at, at our last session when um, there's a horse uh, right next to the arena that uh, in the paddock that um, was uh, for some reason picking off and um, and he was um, he managed to maintain himself and stay connected, stay connected with with you, didn't he? Yeah, that's quite, that's a that's a huge thing. It's a massive thing, but I think Because that's something that he would definitely do in the past, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Makes a huge difference, eh? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, and also getting um, getting um, your horse into a place where, like you say, they're emotionally able to cope with things a lot better once we establish that connection, that relationship, and also obviously the training side of things. Um, the emotional side starts to train. And like I suggested earlier is, once you start to develop those neurons in the brain for those passive brains for learning, the, the, it starts off as a, a very thin path and it develops into a free way of learning. So you know, all the learning we do and all the relaxation and emotional uh, stability comes through developing those those uh, neurons and those networks in the brain. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. And then it starts to happen because it's such a notable. I mean, it's just such a different portion. Actually, mm. it's really amazing, and everybody remarks on it as well. How completely relaxed he is. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> oh, that makes that makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's very normal for you and gratifying as well because you can achieve a kind of connection with the horse. Mm. Exactly, and it's knowing what to do, how to do it. Um, yeah, learning those, learning as a human, learning um, how horses communicate and how horses think, and developing that connection. That's that's. There's nothing better. It's so rewarding. Yeah, I think I think you do. Because you can't fake it with the horse. It's everything is is real time, real real emotion. That's it. And they just know. They know instantly. And I, I just find it a, a, a very, it's, uh, it's very addictive. Um, yeah, but it's also. get going, it is, isn't it? It grounds you as well. Yeah. It teaches you, as a human, it teaches you patience is a big thing. I mean, that's, yeah, absolutely. that's what I've learned over there. My patience levels with, with, with training and horses is, you know, it's, it's really strong now. It's take, but it takes time for to build that patience and not let let impatience get in the way. Never be impatient. Mm -hmm. if, if you have that feeling of being impatient, it's better to not have that feeling of patience. Mm -hmm. just, exactly. just forget about it. You can't find find that kind of calm inside. Just yeah. forget about it. So because it's, that's what you say, don't be more, that's not fair. That's and right. You see it as well as people that are riding there, they mm -hmm. go in there, last. Mm -hmm. For full blast and out and out, and, and they already know before they start to say what they want. Mm. I don't think all the, and, and 
rather rather than what the horse rather than what the horse needs. Like a set program, this is what I want, boom, boom, boom. And then it, it doesn't actually allow any space for figuring Emotion, out what's going on. Emotional awareness. But yeah, there's not much. And a good point you brought up there, Maybe, was making sure that, that you yourself or oneself is um, in, a, in a good emotional state of mind and calming uh, yourself and also your tone and your just your vibration. They can feel the energy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that is what that is what I find so addictive in a way is that you actually you it's I don't know really how much you work on the horse. I think a lot of it is that and on your on yourself. Yeah. Absolutely, it's more about and that's what I do. You know, uh, on a daily basis, is um, I'm training people. I'm, obviously, I'm helping horses and developing the structure and the training program. But it's more about training people. Um, yeah. Be in the right space, in the right, right way of thinking, isn't it? Yeah. It's a bit like yoga. You have to, um, you have to be able to interest the things in your mind. Yeah. And, and that's what I that's, Yeah, that's what I find. That, for me, it's like meditation. Yeah. I love being in that space. It's the best space to be in. It is. <laughs> That's why I do it. <laughs> yeah. You always want to come back for more. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, well, I look forward to our journey. I look forward to seeing you know, in September and continuing the journey. Yeah, me too. I'm also too. Yeah. yeah, lovely. It's, it's been fantastic actually to, uh, to, to have a local trainer so that you can actually make progress and have someone who can, who can have. And ask questions and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah. See it regularly. It makes a big difference. That we can we have access to that regularly. <clears throat> yep, absolutely. And consistency is key. Yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant, mate. But thanks, thanks for joining us. Um, we just uh, just we on our just finishing up now. So thank you to everybody for for joining us. It's been a it's been a wonderful session. Um, yeah, and. Um, May you have a great journey with your horses. If any, there's uh, quite a few people on today. I think there's about 25 people on today. If there's anybody who um, a lot of people haven't worked with, so if there's anybody that would like to contact me and spend some time or book an appointment with, with me, please feel free. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys in a couple of weeks' time. We've got another, another webinar in a couple of weeks' time.